Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Coffee with Enix. In this mini-series, we will go over what we do at Enix, and for this first episode today, I would like to go over the version 5 of Enix framework that we just released. Most of you probably know us through our other FPGA-based off-the-shelf solution, such as our full hardware feed handler, Enix Feed, our market access solution, Enix Access, and our bandwidth management system, Enix Link. But Enix Framework is, in a sense, the oldest solution that we created because initially we designed Enix Framework for ourselves. That was to make sure that Enix would be able to very efficiently design, deploy, and maintain FPGA-based solutions. So when we created Enix Framework, the first thing that we really wanted to include was a hardware abstraction layer. That was to make sure that our hardware engineers would not have to worry about the underlying hardware that the application that they were working on was going to be deployed on. So the board support package abstracts everything that goes around the FPG. And I'm talking about the flash, the board management controller, the external memory, the Ethernet port, or the PCIe. That to make sure that an application can move from a switch-based FPG platform to a PCI Express card if needed. But it goes further than that because it also abstracts the FPGA itself to make sure that an application can be moved from an Intel FPGA to a Xilinx one without having to change a line of code. Keeping that flexibility in mind, we also included configuration file to describe the number of input output of a design along with the frequencies at which each of those run. That was to make sure that an application can start with a small number of Ethernet ports and can be scaled up for production without having to change a line of code. This file also described the number of input and output of the FPGA between the FPGA and the software, the number of DMA channels between the two. Using the Python script provided with this framework, it is then very easy to re-simulate a design, generate a new firmware and deploy it. Again, you've done all that without changing a line of code. We have released Enix Framework to early adopters, but it was only including our core hardware IPs. And I'm talking about our ultra low latency Mac PCS, our TCP stack, UDP stack, and PCIe DMA engine. All of those IPs were delivered along with C++ APIs to make sure that those IP can be easily configured and monitored in production, but as well as our Linux drivers to make sure that our customers can easily deploy this onto servers or switches without having to do that. Those three blocks that I just described in this early version of the framework created a framework that allowed our customers to create an FPGA application and have a workflow to update it and maintain it and not have to worry about everything that is Ethernet, TCP, UDP, and PCI Express based on the FPGA side, but also not having to worry about the management of all of that on the software side. But with the version five, we push this further because we provide what we think is the first standardized library of FPGA IPs. Any FPGA project will have to encounter the same issues. How to manipulate a streaming bus, extract data, insert data, split it, mux it. How to deal with memory buses and registers. How to deal with mass functions and how to deal with caches and memories. In a version five of the framework, we include more than 60 IPs that we created for ourselves initially, but that are now available to you that will help any FPJ developer accelerate and lower its time to market. The idea was for ourselves to make sure that if we change the width of a streaming bus, we don't have to recode the function that extract data or insert data into it. It was also to make sure that from an application like Enix Link using hash tables, we could reuse that hash tables for Enix feed and not have to recode it. So we created that library internally, but in a version five now, it is available to our customers. Again, to make sure that FPGA development can be standardized. But we are going further than this. And in the next coming months, we will work on to enriching the framework with our off the shelf products. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, we use an experiment to design and create our FPGA-based solution, but we want to turn this around and now use our off-the-shelf product to enrich the framework by adding trading-specific features. And I'm talking about 
are the list of market data decoders that Linux Feed uses, the execution stack that Linux Access uses, or any bandwidth management function that Linux Link uses. By doing that and combining it with the framework, it will really help our customers develop more complex application in a smaller time with less risk of failure. We will be covering those common use cases in further videos, such as how to develop a risk check gateway, a smart auto router, or ultra low latency tick to trade system. But that's it for today and that first episode. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, you can go onto our website, enix.com, and reach out to us if you want more information about Enix Framework version 5. Thank you. Mm -hmm.